We are about to take control of your television set. Do not attempt to adjust it. <laughs> How did I become involved in Alice in Wonderland? Well, that goes back to my night uh, for, to my twenties, actually, when I was studying at the Ontario College of Art, and it's really about a free lunch. I was hungry, and uh, one of the profs said, well, you know, I'm, I want to hand print an edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and I need someone to provide uh, images, and because it's being hand printed, those images should be wood engravings. And so I said, well, I can do that. And he says, David, if you do that, then uh, we'll uh, provide you with lunch. And I said, oh, that's great. So the uh, Bill Poole, my uh, mentor at the Ontario College of Art, said, uh, come to us with lunch and I'll introduce you to uh, Joe Brabant and uh, we will start this project, the first Canadian edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, hand set entirely in uh, lead type uh, here in Canada and illustrated by a Canadian artist. And th this is a copy of the handmade edition of Alice in Wonderland and one of the other challenges I had was um, Bill asked me if I could do watermarks, and you can see in this, uh, there's a watermark of a rabbit uh, in the paper. And I made water, I made, handmade all the paper for the book, and uh, and then we did, uh, I did watermarks in many of the, many of the sheets. I was just learning how to do a lot of these techniques, and so for me, the journey was also about learning how to do wood engraving as well as make paper and uh, in, in some cases uh, uh, set the type. But Bill Poole set most all of the type for, these, for this edition. And for each page, he would set the type by hand, just like Gutenberg. And then the type was distributed back into the drawers and then the next page would be set. And then once a month, we would have a meeting. This is where the free lunch comes in. We would have a meeting and uh, I would get a free lunch in a nice restaurant and they would buy the, the food and I would present what images I had for that particular meeting. Of course, I wanted that to last as long as possible. That's why there's uh, 96 wood engravings for Alice's uh, Adventures in Wonderland and uh, 94 engravings, I believe, for uh, the other ones. So the challenges for illustrating something that everyone's illustrated from Arthur Rackham to, of course, John Tenniel is what are you going to make a picture of that hasn't already been depicted? Uh, the author had a fantastic um, imagination. And so there were lots of opportunities to create images that hadn't been depicted before. But some of them were challenges like, what does a tove look like? Well. In, uh, Carol describes a tove as something that is a cross between a badger and a corkscrew. Uh, that's a challenge. How do we how do we come up with an image of a of a creature like that? So I was interested in uh, in trying to rediscover uh, that the uh, the characters in in my own way. Uh, Bill Poole decided to print all the engravings in color. We wanted to have our our edition unique, and so this is this is one way that we tackled that. Well, Andy Malcolm and I uh, took the challenge to uh, restart the Cheshire Cat Press, and we decided we were going to do uh, Carolinia uh, and uh, continue the the work that Bill Poole, the late Bill Poole, and Joseph Brabant, who were uh, the original partners in the Cheshire Cat Press, and then Joe Brabant suggested that we bring Andy in. And uh, Andy said that, oh, you know, Joe and uh, Edward Wakeling were working on a uh, a book about uh, Harry Furness, and they would uh, they wanted to do an edition of Alice with all of the Harry Furness illustrations. Now, Harry Furness was an illustrator for Punch magazine, and he had done some illustrations for Carol because he was the illustrator of Sylvia and Bruno, another uh, children's book that Carol had written. The original illustrations that Harry Furness had done for Alice in Wonderland had never been actually published in a single volume but no one had actually gathered them all together and done uh, a, an edition of them. And Andy, because he's very good at things like this, he found uh, the original sketches at the Fales Library in New York and arranged to have high-res scans made of them. And so we decided we were going to do an, uh, an elephant folio size edition of the portfolio with the reproductions of uh, 
Furnace's uh, illustrations for Alice. And so that was the beginning of a journey. We had to make all the plates and we had to uh, design the portfolio and we printed them all on acid-free paper and did a very uh, limited number of those special portfolios to honor the work of uh, the uh, Harry Furnace. A lot of the poems in that, uh, that Carol wrote are easy to memorize and uh, they keep turning up in pop culture and they persist because of their playfulness and their nonsense. And there's something grand about nonsense, about the ridiculous, about the crazy, about things that just don't seem to be normal, where you're feeling a bit odd. And that's a bit how the world really is. And I think that that was what Carol was explaining to Alice. Not only is Alice in Wonderland, uh, as David Day has recognized, uh, a, a, a story about the classics. Think about it. It's the maiden's journey to the underworld. Remember, Persephone gets stuck in the underworld. And what happens to her? She eats the pomegranate and can't leave. Well, Alice eats a little cake and becomes too big to leave. And so we're seeing references to some of the books that were in Carol's library. And Charlie Lovett has written a book about uh, the, uh, the books in Carol's library. And that was, that's always fascinating to see what Carol was reading, what he was interested in. It can tell you a lot about a person to look at their library. I came to Alice as an adult. I was aware of the story, but I hadn't gone any deeper than the surface, meaning that I had read to me and uh, I thought that was interesting, uh, if not uh, a bit crazy. Uh, and, but as an adult, I, I started to read between the lines. And I think that that's where Andy and I pick up too, is that we both are interested in uh, the fun that Alice still has in it and, and also how it seems to be timeless. The many characters in Alice, uh, they, uh, they have a charm to them and they have similarities to people that might be in your own lives and you might be able to say, oh, that's so much like so-and-so. Well, I'm hoping what you will take away from coming to this exhibit is a new appreciation of uh, the works of Charles Ludwig Dodson uh, and his, uh, also known as Lewis Carroll, and his wonderful imagination and how he delighted children and has for centuries uh, with the various characters and uh, situations that those characters found themselves in. And also see yourself in this story about how we can sometimes be lost in the mayhem of the world where things seem to be uh, nonsensical and ridiculous and unimportant or important depending upon the situation. Remember the kings at the trials saying, important, write that down. No, unimportant. Uh, yes, that's important too. So it's this idea that sometimes we, we don't know uh, where the truth lies. And certainly in our time, uh, finding a bit of uh, nonsense in our lives is refreshing. <laughs>